Hello and welcome to another episode of Nathan Chu's Disney Review. I am your host, Nathan Chu, and today we are reviewing the Paint the Night Parade at the Disneyland Resort. It's been a while since I've done done some reviews. I've been really busy with work and everything, working like six days a week, working a lot of overtime. So it's hard for me to get to edit these reviews and get them down. Last one I did was Halloween time at the Disneyland Resort. Uh, the Paint the Night Parade I got to see when I was at Disneyland. My, my most recent trip, which was in, which was almost a month ago now. Um, actually, it was a month ago now when I'm recording this. Um, so I hope you enjoy the review. And let's get on with the review. Disneyland's Paint the Night Parade. The Paint the Night Parade started this year, 2015, in celebration of the 60th anniversary. It is based off the Hong Kong Disneyland Paint the Night Parade, which started off about six months earlier. Uh, actually, longer than that, about nine months earlier. And features the song, uh, When Can I See You Again? Um, and they interact with other songs that are from the different movies that are displayed during the parade. And the parade was inspired by the Main Street Electrical Parade at Disneyland. And it is Disneyland's first all-LED all parade. Um, it has a few floats in it. It's got some walking characters. And it's a great parade. You start off with the fairies. And Tinkerbell uh, walking down the ferries walking down Main Street, and uh, Tinkerbell uh, on a float just looks like she's flying in the air. Then behind it, you have the Peter Pan sitting on top of a drum, which is reminiscent of the Main Street Electrical Parade uh, with the with like the giant with the train and the giant drum being pulled by it in the beginning. Then you have the um, the side of the drum says um, "Paint the Night Parade." Then you have uh, Monsters Inc. Per, uh, float coming down with Sully on the front of it, and doors spinning around showing different images from the movie and whatnot. It looks pretty cool. And you got where it goes. There's a twenty three nineteen, and Sully's like frantically hitting, hitting the control panel that he's in front of, trying to get rid of it. And then now here comes the best um, part of the, what I think is the best float in the whole parade. Um, you got the Ma you got Mac, which is the, the truck from Cars. You have Lightning McQueen first. And then you got these um, guys walking. They kind of almost look like Transformers. Um, they're just in suits in Transformer. And they go... And just the way they look, they look like an old Transformer toy. And that, that the Mack truck in the back part has a string of lights going down, and they just change color, and it looks it looks amazing. Um, it's it, it is really great to see. It's worth seeing. It's just mesmerizing to watch it. Then you got the Little Mermaid float which has Ariel on it and you get C Sebastian, King Triton, Flounder, and then behind them is these electric jellyfish that um their tentacles swing around and they have a Marlin and Nemo going through them. Um it's pretty cool. I don't know why they don't have Dory with them, but oh well. Then you have the Toy Story float, which is led by Jesse walking with uh, some some cowgirls, and they're they're swinging lassos around with lights on the end. And then you got the giant Slinky dog with Woody and Buzz on it, and those Huey's alien toys like sprinkled around on there. Um, then behind that, you got a little alien spaceship with the the little aliens like. 
looks like they're shooting guns from Buzz Lightyear's Astro Blasters. And then you got what's called the Candlelight Dreams float, which is primarily a giant Beauty and the like. It's a Beauty and the Beast one on the front with Bell there, and then behind it you got like a little train where it has Rapunzel uh, with lanterns around her little um, pod she's sitting in, and then you got Cinderella who's got the slipper, uh, glass slipper behind her. Uh, it's hard to notice it unless you're, you're actually like staring at it, trying to find all the details. And then you have um, the Frozen Float, which is really massive. Um, they did a really well job on it. It's really lit up. And you got Anna, Elsa, and then Olaf at the back. Um, and they have little, it's a tower, and they got little windows, and each little window has, like, different parts of the movie. I saw three of them, because I couldn't see the fourth one on the other side. And then in the end, you have, um... The Fab Five, which is Mickey, Goofy, Donald, and Minnie. Well, I guess four of the Fab Five. They don't have Pluto. Um, and Goofy, Donald, and Minnie are on little, little like, half circles that are going around. Kind of, if you've seen the Main Street Electrical Parade, it's like the turtle, but without the head. And then you got Mickey, who's Sorcerer Mickey, and uh, the lights that are moving behind him. Just go crazy, and it just, it just looks really cool. It's definitely worth seeing this parade. This parade is a 4.5 out of 5. Um, actually, I'd give it a 4 out of 5. Like, the the last floats with Goofy, Donald, and Minnie is it's okay. Like, Mickey's is good, but compared to Mack Truck, which is, like, in my mind, the pinnacle of it is just, it's just great. And like compared to the other floats, it's kind of a lackluster ending. Um, better, there could have been a better send off for them, in in my opinion. Um, but it's definitely worth seeing. It's definitely worth seeing multiple times. I've only seen it the one time I was there, but it's definitely I'd definitely see it again because you could sit on the other side, see things you didn't see on the floats, and that's what's great about the Disneyland parades is. They have so much detail on a lot of the floats that you need to go on both sides to see it all. And the music, the music is really great in there. It gets you going. You want to get pumped. You actually want to start getting up and start dancing. Um, they seamlessly blend like the songs that go with the floats with the whole. Um, can we see this again? It just it just works like this masterfully did it almost like just like the this is like the sensational parade where everything weaves in together and fits um as long as you're sitting in like not in a transition spot everything will line up perfectly um i've had at least with sensational where it's a little off because it just right when the float leaves it starts the next one not just kind of not kind of smoothly just because of where the speakers are and stuff but from where I was sitting, it it just it works so well. It, it's a it's a great soundtrack. I I would listen to it without even having to um, sit there and watch the parade. The parade is definitely worth watching. Um, if you if you go there and you don't really want to wait a long time to see it, maybe see it after the fireworks. Um, see the fireworks on Main Street and then just sit down on a curb and wait. Um, you might have to, w well, you will have to wait a little while to see it, but at least you're sitting down to see it, that not just standing there waiting for the parade to start. Um, the, if there's two showings of the parade, the start for the first one will be by Small World. Um, if you see the second one, the start's going to be by, uh, on Main Street. Um, at least that's how it was when I was there. That's usually, I think, how it is. Unless they're only going to do one showing a night, then it's probably going to alternate on nights. But definitely check it out if you're in the resort and you're looking for a cool thing to see. Thank you for watching this review of the Paint the Night Parade. I hope it influences you one way or another to see it. Um, I do have a link down below. 
for an actual video I took of the parade, of the entire parade. And it just takes about five-ish minutes for it to actually get to me. I started recording right when I heard the music starting. Um, but it took about five minutes for it to get down Main Street, maybe a little bit longer. Um, thank you for watching the review. Um, you can follow me on Twitter, at Nathan Chu, that's N-A-T-H-A-N-C-H-U. You can check out redbuttonjamfest.com for more stuff me and my compadres do. You also can uh, check out, subscribe to the channel, and check out the other videos that we do. I do little adventure videos and whatnot and of Nate's Wonders and trying to get back to the zoo, but it's hard to in New York six days and you know, until I want to take that seventh day to rest. Hope you guys all have a magical day and I'll catch you later.